Invention by invention, discovery by discovery, I'm working my way through humanity's technologies, starting from sharp made rocks and gradually advancing towards the industrial age with my own steam engine. When it comes to essential tools for bootstrapping you up these technologies, nothing takes primacy over the so-called mother of all machines, the lathe. That said, I've already built four, possibly five different lathes in past videos with mixed results. For all the talk of the lathe being a game changer, I have yet to achieve something as groundbreaking as history suggests. But thanks to a clever design we explored in the last video by Leonardo da Vinci, I think we have a 400 year shortcut to achieving something a lot more powerful. If I can learn from all my past failures, this single device could revolutionize the level of precision and technical achievement I can reach. Let's see if I can get this to work. The lathe dates back to ancient Egypt in the 4th century BC, likely resembling my first lathe, the bow lathe. Throughout history, many versions have emerged, including the spring-powered pole lathe and an early treadle design documented by da Vinci. I managed to get all of these designs to work, but with significant limitations. The biggest issue, the learning curve. Mastering these early designs takes time, and rather than spending years perfecting them, I've decided to focus on advancing to the next stage. Using a reciprocating motion to carve with a bow or pole lathe requires a certain level of coordination, something I found difficult and a bit like trying to chew gum while you walk. Instead, I move forward to lathes that operate in a continuous motion. I had the most success with the giant wheel on the Da Vinci lathe. However, as a direct drive system, its rotational speed was limited, making it only really effective on more soft woods. I attempted to upgrade it to a treadle lathe, but ran into several issues that left me tweaking and retrying the design over and over again to no avail. Nearly lost my mind trying to get this design to work, and have continued tweaking it behind the scenes with little success. So time to move on to a new design. Instead of a treadle, this lathe uses a straightforward yet powerful giant wheel, spun by assistant and connected to the workbed. The difference in pulley sizes dramatically increased the lathe's speed, while a simple crank design allows for a direct pulley connection. But perhaps the most significant limitation of all my past lathes was the absence of one crucial technology, the screw. A modern lathe today uses multiple screw-driven devices, allowing you to fine-tune in multiple aspects, from a tightenable chuck to grasp an object, a tailstock that you can adjust into just the right amount of pressure, and what will become more important as we proceed into metal milling, the adjustable carriage can be finally adjusted using screws to lock down a cutting tool, taking the tool out of the machinist's hand and into the actual machines. Not to mention the inclusion of a lead screw, which works as a reference for making new screws on any of our future machines. Prior to this, we were limited to basically just wedges, pressure fitting, and holding the tool by my hand. The introduction of this one simple machine is a massive game changer that opens the door to a whole new world. To speed things along, we can reuse existing parts from my old lathes. Doesn't quite make the full rotation. The main body and bed of the lathe can be repurposed from my treadle lathe. For the great wheel, we can repurpose the giant flywheel from the Da Vinci lathe. It'll just need to be modified to include a lip on the edges so it can hold a pulley belt. For its axle and crank, we can reuse the beefed up axle we forged for the treadle wheel. From the spring pole lathe, we can keep the original poppets to use for the tailstock. Now is just a few minor improvements and a ton of tweaking, and hopefully we have a much more powerful lathe at our disposal. Leonardo da Vinci was a master of invention, always experimenting, always discovering. That same spirit of curiosity is what makes creating for this channel so exciting. If you want to inspire hands-on creativity in your kids, KiwiCo makes it easy. KiwiCo delivers hands-on projects straight to your door, designed to get kids excited about science, engineering, art, and more. With five different club lines tailored to each age and interest, each crate is packed with high-quality material and rigorously tested to ensure it's both fun and educational. I had the chance to check out the laser speaker from KiwiCo Labs, and I was seriously impressed. The design is top notch, the instructions are crystal clear, and the final result, super cool. I had to put on a laser light show with a wireless speaker and sound visualizer. Just sync it up to your phone, fold out the handles, and fire up the red laser beam. It pulses to the beat of your music. And that's just one of many awesome STEM projects from KiwiCo Labs. What I love most about KiwiCo is how it encourages kids to think creatively and build real skills over time whether it's engineering, robotics, and even art techniques. There's something for every interest and skill level. And the best part, these projects aren't just one and done. They're designed to be played with and enjoyed again and again. As someone who loves making things from scratch, I really appreciate how KiwiCo inspires kids to be hands-on and curious of the world around them. And as a bonus, it's a great way to spend quality time together without screens. If you want your kids to experience the magic of KiwiCo, use my code HTME to get 50% off your first monthly club crate or go to kiwico.com HTME. Check it out. I think you and your kids are going to love it. With the use of the screws, we can now make a few notable improvements. First is the tailstock. 
It was previously just a pin in the poppet that was held in place with a wedge. This worked, but as it ran, the object would loosen up. It was difficult to reset and retighten it over and over again. With a threaded rod now, we can make a locking tailstock that can be easily tightened and adjusted with ease. Next is the tool rest. Previously, this was just a block of wood to rest the tools against. We can get something a bit fancier now called a banjo. This device clamps onto the bed of the lathe, allowing it to be adjusted along the track and inward and outward as needed. A tool rest can then be attached to it allowing it to be adjusted up and down and clamped in place with a threaded rod. This gives us a wide range of motion where we can put our rest while also being a firm reference to hold our tools onto it. Lastly, we just need a new spindle to attach our crank wheel to the workpiece and get things spinning. And then to help us with our carving, Theo forged a few more options for lathe chisels. One issue that I don't think many seamstresses had to worry about, and that's how shaky their hands get after blacksmithing. So after all that work, we have a functioning lathe now. I say this combines all of the best attributes of all the other attempts at lathes that I've done and makes something a lot more effective. I think this is the very first lathe that just feels like a modern lathe. You can just continuously work on your piece without having to worry about building up speed or RPMs or hitting it at the right time and been able to actually use it to make some things now once we had it up and running for our next few projects.
The first thing we did is make a new spin bill here that fits our actual width. We found that kind of tended to push the belt where it's thicker. So rather than pushing it to the outside, we have it gently curved, kind of pushed towards the center. And that seems to be doing pretty good. But I think this last version really kind of shows the power of the screw. And I think Da Vinci's screw making machine is just a huge game changer for what is possible. Because up until like really well developed lathes, they were still being hand carved, which means all of these threads would need to be hand carved and they won't be consistent and they won't be interchangeable or anything. Now with his machine, we can make a repeatable thread of consistent size. The next step for this is going to be applying that concept to here with the lead screw. His design is very good for what we needed, which is bootstrapping. The use of two lead screws makes it a lot more accurate. Because when the machine runs, it, it's very wobbly, but it's surprisingly accurate despite that. I think that's just because of the two lead screws that the whole thing kind of wobbles together consistently. But all that wobble does limit how fast we could run it. Updating it to a more modern technique, which takes the concept of a lead screw, puts it at the bottom here, you use just one, and then you use that to cut a consistent thread into whatever you're working, is going to be a much faster approach. Like the biggest issue with Da Vinci's machine is that it is incredibly slow. That's why when faced with having to completely rebuild the machine multiple times to reverse the thread, to reverse it, to reverse it, we opted for the much more straightforward way of seizing two sets of gears to make one screw. So, so we ran into some issues with the holes in the wood getting a little bit wider. And I think kind of why there was a general shift as metal became cheaper to making the whole machine out of metal. But until then, even though we we're using soft pine, we just got to reinforce the parts that start to wear with metal. So what we started to do, I think we've made them too small though, because it's putting the friction all in one spot and it's actually cutting through our spindle. So I think the next step is to make a bearing that's a little bit wider, just so it kind of spreads out the friction, but also offers more area to put uh, some sort of grease on it. So we took a stab at trying to do a metal on this and it seemed very promising. I think the main issue is it's hard to hold the metal cutting tool to it with it not bouncing off. That kind of just reveals that the next major step very soon happened in history, which was building a lockdown carriage that utilizes screws so you can finally adjust it, but holds the tool itself. So it's not the machine that's doing the cutting, but the machine itself. And I think we're gonna start adding onto this and making improvements as we go. We can start entering into kind of the era of Mosley and the invention of precision that's very soon. Until then, we have a machine. It's gonna be incredibly useful, very excited. I think as we power up and get more powerful lasers, there's always gonna be some concern, like at what point is this gonna get dangerous? So naturally, I tested this. Shoved an arm in there and see what happens, and uh, seems to be pretty easy to stop. So I think this is a huge development, massive game changer, going to be able to do a lot more things with this, including ball bearings, which we'll do next. So thanks for watching. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Been a little light on releases lately, just a lot of sickness, a lot of production issues. So hoping to get back into it, back up and running. So hopefully filling in the remaining gaps hopefully get us to a steam engine maybe this year. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.